We oh, forgot to stockpiling. Oh, no. <laughs> that was the whole point of these videos was to do stockpiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness we got on this rabbit trail we so talked i mean we've like talked around it we just haven't said the word <laughs> oh my goodness okay guys i am here with my assistant honey <laughs> and we're gonna leave all that in <laughs> so we started this series of videos because we were gonna start talk about stockpiling <laughs> And we just got on everything else but stockpiling. I'm the author of the Dining on a Dime cookbook where you can eat better and spend less. I guarantee you will save money your first trip to the grocery store. You will save the price of your book. Everybody does. Yeah. Every day. We, we will get 20, 30 testimonials every time we do a show of people who said, I took this to the grocery store the first time and I saved all the money. So you will save your money. So we're going to talk about stockpiling so we can actually get to what we were supposed to talk about. Stockpiling. So it's just, isn't it so just second nature? You don't even think about it. It's it not is. A thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. So what is stockpiling? I guess let everybody know what that is first. Uh, stockpiling is having like more than a week's worth in your house, right? So some people there's preppers, they stockpile for 30 years, right? And I don't, I could not manage that much food, yeah. but I would say I have probably, we could live off six months to a year on some things that I have stockpiled. So yeah, everything except the stuff in your fridge, you can, you can stockpile. Yes. So stockpiling is basically buying food to use later, not just for this week. Yeah. Now, why would you want to stockpile? It's, it's the biggest way to save money. Yeah. Because it's the number one. When you stock, yeah. When you stockpile, you have looked at your ads, you have mm -hmm. seen what's on sale, you have bought extra of what's on sale, and you have put it aside for a future use when that item isn't on sale. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the ways that we store our stockpile? The freezer. We just mm -hmm. had a video on that. You yep. can go back and watch that. So the freezer, pantry. And a pantry doesn't mean that you have to have, do you have a physical pantry, a room? You don't. No. You have like a closet, uh -huh. right? That yeah. you turned into I a pantry. I have a coat closet that I turned into a pantry. Okay. So yeah. And I hear people that have food under their bed, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you can, even if you live, so many people say, well, I can't do that because I live in an apartment. It's yeah. find a way, get rid of some weird collection that you have and, mm -hmm. and put food there instead, because it will actually save you money. And it's, per it has a purpose. Yeah. And like, um, People have gotten trash cans and put a solid, um, like round tabletop on it and put in their stockpile stuff of like beans and rice. If you eat those, we were just talking about how we don't eat beans and rice, but like you could put rice in there. You could put pasta in there. You could put, um, yeah. things like that. Um, for me, I don't have a pantry in this house. So I turned a coat closet into a pantry. Yes. Then downstairs, I have like, it's my, our heater room and we put up some shelves downstairs in our heater room for extra rice and canned goods and stuff like that. So I have a pantry upstairs and then I do have shelving in our, you know, I live somewhere where we have basements mm -hmm. and we have an unfinished basement. So I have shelves down there where I keep a real majority the majority of the long-term things go down there. So like I have a hundred pounds of pasta down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then we go shopping at our yeah. own store in our own house. Yes. And it's all stuff that we've bought on sale at its yeah. lowest price. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when we find something like pasta, that's just a stinking good deal, like 25 cents for a thing of pasta or 50 cents for a thing of pasta, I'll buy everything they have. Put it down there and stockpile it. People say, well, don't you worry about bugs or that kind of thing. Well, in Colorado, we don't have bugs. In Minnesota. Bugs. Yeah, I've never found bugs in food ever. I don't yeah. know. Now, if you are concerned about that, though, you can get something called diatinaceous earth, food grade diatinaceous earth. And even though we don't have bugs in Colorado, I do it just as a precaution and just sprinkle a little bit of that around. It's a powder. Sprinkle a little bit of that around your food. And um, it will kill anything before it gets into your food. So I just have a little sprinkling. It's edible. It's perfectly safe for humans. It's organic. 
it's it's great. But if you live in a place like Kansas where you have weevils in your wheat, you know, you can get weevils and stuff like that. You yeah. Yeah. Freeze it for um twenty four hours. And then yeah. you can store it, or if you have room in your freezer, just store it in your freezer. The same is true with sugar. If you have ants, you may want to be careful with that. Keep it up on a higher shelf, not a lower shelf. Put it in the freezer or <coughs> do tenacious earth around it. Um, but stockpiling is really how we save. Now, for me, stockpile prices are... Uh, 39 cents for chicken quarters, thighs, drumsticks with the bone in, $1.47 to $1.67 for boneless, skinless chicken, $1.99 for hamburger, uh, $2.99 for roasts, uh, strawberries are 99 cents, and then canned goods, about 50 cents for my fruits and my vegetable canned goods. Um, that would be a stockpile price for me. I said 50 cents for my pasta. What is that about the same for you or I can't get pasta that cheap. Okay. So the lowest that I can get it is sixty six cents a pound. Okay. So yeah. there and it varies across the country. Uh just little bits, not huge. Yeah, and here's yeah. the thing. Why would you want a stockpile? Well, first of all, I don't have to go to the grocery store every day. Yes. I don't even go every week. Yeah. I go about four times a month, maybe. And I do one big grocery stock up a month. I can make whatever my family eats anytime because I usually always have everything I need to make it. Yeah. So if someone is craving chicken pot pie, sure. I, I will have all the stuff to make chicken pot yeah. pie. And here's another thing why you would want to talk about. First, it saves you time. Second, it saves you money. Third, I it's security. If my husband loses his job, I don't have to worry about groceries. You're firing Mike. He's lost his job. <laughs> okay. Well, let's say Dan loses his job. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, but when you think about it, okay, let's say YouTube completely shuts, shuts down our channel. Let's say never Facebook. I mean, you never look at Venezuela. If you yeah. want an example, a modern day example of food insecure people Look yeah. at Venezuela. Just read a little bit about yeah. what's going on there. They don't have food. Yeah. They don't and have food. When you have a socialistic society like that, you don't have food. And not to be getting into politics, but that's where our society is heading. And it's really, it's really stupid, but that's where people are heading. And the thing is, you don't have to worry about food. So now Heidi and I. I'm have, not at the grocery store. Yeah. We have six months to a year to figure out if our economy was to completely collapse, we would have six months to a year to figure out how to feed our family without starving in between that. Yes. And if a <sighs> blizzard hits in Minnesota, you're n I I'm not there buying the bread and milk. So <gasps> you, there's more for you to have because... People don't realize that your city only has about two to three days worth of food for your entire population. And most people only have, on average, three days worth of food in their house. See, it's You're sad. You're on a precarious edge. Anything can happen. All the flooding we've had, all the, mm -hmm. the tornadoes, the things that we have had in this country that can, you know, shut down our trucking system and things like that. You just... You don't know what can happen. Well, when we had our floods here, the grocery store up in Estes Park was sold out in 24 hours because no one could get down the mountain to get food, but nobody yeah. had anything stored up. I, yeah. I'm not in Estes Park, but all of my neighbors were going to the grocery store. I didn't even, it did not even cross my mind to go to the grocery store. Oh, exactly. And we just recently had a situation where we were having problems with our well and our well, we, I'm on a shared well with five, a total of five houses. We share a well. None of my neighbors had any kind of water. Like they did not have any bottled water, any gallons of water and when our well was shut down, you know, for 12 hours, they could all go to the store and there was water, but they had to go to the store mm -hmm. and I didn't have to, you know, yeah. I had water in my basement. So. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why we stockpile guys. We think it's a great idea. Um, that's kind of the premise of everything else we've been talking about. 
And so yeah. it all kind of goes together. So watch this whole entire series. It's a great series. Um, but that's, yeah, that's kind of why we stockpile and how we stockpile a little bit. Um, when we talk about the ads and stuff, we talk a little bit more about stockpiling. Yeah. But yeah, so please. Well, back to those. Mm -hmm. If you want to know the specifics on how to set aside money out of your yep. budget and things mm -hmm. like that to stockpile, go back to those. Yep. Yeah. Videos. All right. Please like, subscribe, and share. Check out our Dining on a Dime cookbook where you can eat better, spend less. You will save what you spend on the book, the first trip to the grocery store. Please give us a great big thumbs up and visit us at, did I say visit us at livingonadime.com? I don't know. If I didn't, visit us at livingonadime.com. We'll see you guys Bye. next time.